Howdy, folks. Hey, it's Callum. Welcome to the brewery. Uh, brew day. Uh, which one? This is what I've been talking about doing for a while. I've been looking forward to doing for a while. Um, it's the Hop Goblin. I'm brewing, brewing this fella. The uh, Hop Goblin Ruby Ale. The Ruby Beer, it's actually. They actually call it a Ruby Beer. Um, and this is a can I've got sitting in the fridge. I've got a couple of these. I've got a four pack recently. And I kept one. The plan was I was going to drink this while I was brewing the beer today. Uh, that's our first little detour from where I was planning on going because I'm still three weeks into dry July. So I won't be drinking that fella today while I'm doing the brew. Um, so that's a shame because that's a bloody nice beer, which is why I'm brewing it. That takes us to the second deviation. The plan was to brew this from scratch, all grain. Uh, but recently, whilst doing a live, uh, and talking about the Hobgoblin that the beers had coming up, and someone posted a link. It might have been, might have been Steve. I think it was one of the was one of the beer monsters, uh, and they posted a link. They had a Facebook post from the brew shop or ESB Brewing uh, that they had a limited uh, edition fresh wort kit uh, which they were calling Hop Goblin um, obviously their version of the Hop Goblin um, there's a bit of resemblance between <laughs> yeah the filler on the can and the filler on their picture so uh, went off the other case last weekend because the brew shop has a shop in Nara and I thought okay I'll drop in there uh, I was catching up with Steve while I was down there we, we exchanged a few things but I thought if they happen to have one down there I'll pick it up uh, and yes they did walked in they had two of them so I grabbed one so instead of me brewing this from scratch all grain I'm just going to use fresh water kit uh, yeah, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit of cheating, but I do know that there is very limited hobgoblin recipes floating around, uh, and any of the recipes that are floating around are all fairly similar. That for that reason, uh, well, that reason being that uh, quite a few years ago, um, and I'm talking probably, I don't know around 2013, uh, top of my head, could have been a year either side of that. Uh, One of the podcasts in America, I can't remember which one it was, they had a section they called Can You Brew It? where they would talk to brewers of commercial beer and they would try to replicate, get a recipe or as close to a recipe as they can out of the brewers and then they'd brew it and see how close they got. Uh, and one of those was the Hobgoblin. And the reason I went searching was that was from this. This is my very first bottle of Hobgoblin uh, that's been kept on my bitty display above the door uh, which yeah, plenty of you would be would have seen um, cause ever, ever since trying that I've just I fell in love with it uh, and I've, I've brewed two versions of it but as I said when you go looking for the for the um, version everything tends to be around this podcast of can you brew it where the brewer when you listen to it gives fairly detailed information uh, doesn't list exact ingredients but certainly enough that you can within the context of the brew and you know brewing in England and whatnot you can piece it together so as I said the recipes that are floating around are all very similar there's just a, some, some slight variation on you know one of the specialty malts um, the actual yeast they use because that was left that was a bit ambiguous exactly what yeast they use um, and I remember that there was a reference to using uh, an amount I think it was I think it was treacle I can't access my actual recipe that I nutted out that's on that's an old because it's that's old it's on brewmate which is only on my PC um, I'm pretty sure I haven't 
got it. Yeah, I don't have it here, so I can't. But there was talk to using some brown sugar slash um, treacle or maybe even some golden syrup type of something in that realm um, in a small quantity but it, it's there in the recipe uh, so that I find sometimes gets dropped does get left out of recipes um, like I'm looking one here this is from just a recipe that, from Pig Den Brewing uh, I've, I've done his I think, it was, I think it was his I think it was his crankshaft and he has nothing there's nothing in the in his recipe uh, it's all grain but there was a definite discussion as part of that in part of that interview around that so anyway the long and short of that is that I'm pretty confident that this kit's going to be in the realms anyway so I thought I'd run with it and given that I don't do freshwater kits too often here on the channel uh, a lot of brewers are getting into it and they're doing them more so I thought oh let's have a, let's have a bit of a look at one um, as I said so I can sort of show how easy these things are to put together uh, and also yeah uh, I've been pretty busy so a, a nice easy brew day is not gonna not gonna really hurt me just at the moment so this be her ESB uh, I said they are uh, the extra special brewers uh, they're out they're from Sydney they've got what's a number of number of home brew shops okay there's no real information on this because uh, because this is a sort of a, a limited one there's no information on the website um, to set in the front here uh, for suggestions on yeast selection dry hopping and grain etc visit their website yeah you go to website, but there's no information on this uh, and the only thing so the only thing that was on there is just that and that's just simply for tagging uh, it's got no information at all there's no details as to yeah original gravity of the wart um, any suggestions for yeast or yeah dry hopping and stuff so on that level there is no dry hopping in the hop goblin so I'm not going so there's no hop, dry hopping going to happen everything should be in here should be anything to add yeast is the only place on changing things a little bit um, I'm going to split this yeah you knew what was going to happen uh, I've got two yeasts here I've got Liberty Bell and Empire Ale uh, both mangrove jacks and the reality is any of the English strains are going to work all right down at Nara the other day the fellow uh, down there maybe his name I can't remember uh, was saying he had this on and it was nearly finished um, he was brewing it with Nottingham now for me I'm concerned Nottingham would be a little bit uh, lacking in final body for the Hobgoblin and this is one and that's part of the reason I'm going to two yeast the other reason I'm going to two yeast is this this is a Hobgoblin lesson for folks uh, that's the cans that we're currently getting here in Oz 4.5 percent ABV this the old fill in the bottle 5.2 percent that I remember quite distinctly being a deeper deeper beer a bit more body and certainly a little bit more uh, impact from the dark dark fruits you know um, when you when I go into which wouldn't have a look at what's going on uh, basically that's how it runs the bottles are 5.2 uh, I think they're 5.1 now, but the bottles are stronger than the cans. So, looking at the bottle is pretty much what they're serving on the on the cask at the brewery. Um, so this is more the real deal, uh, and that's a cut down version for whatever reason I don't know. So I'm just simply assuming that that's just watered back to get it to 4.5%, um, which explains certainly the difference in body and 
that the strength of that flavour of the dried fruit. Now, this is a problem I've had with my pr previous two batches I've tried. Both made very nice beers, very nice beers, but not really getting that dried fruit in the in the back end of the beer. Um, and this is where this yeast comes in. I've previously used uh, a burnt nail um, and like I can't touch the top of my head, but I think I might have used a, a Yorkshire a Yorkshire ale of some kind. I can't think of that short. It's a White Labs. Um, but either way, um, these two. The Emperor, the Liberty Bell um, is recommended for English special bitters, and this technically is going to fall more in that category than anything else. Ruby beer as such is not a style of any kind, but it's, so it falls more in that ESB sort of category. That's their recommended yeast for that style, the M36 Liberty Bell. And that, by my understanding, is what used to be the Burton Union. Um, so that's very close to sort of the yeast you're looking at. But this is a little bit more, this is, this is relatively high attenuation, 74 to 78%. So it's going to strip a good a, a good mac, whack of the body out. The Empire Ale Yeast, the M15. This is slightly less attenuative. It'll, it'll, it goes somewhere to 70 to 75. My experience, it tends to finish out around 72% for me. Um, so it's going to leave more body. But they do, it's stated that this is going to leave full body with an exceptional depth <laughs> uh, and ferments with full rich dark fruit flavours. Now I've used this Empire Ale on some bigger beers. I can't really know how pronounced that dried fruit flavour is, but that is what I'm after. So, and a little bit more body. So we're going to go there. So two yeasts. The other, the other ish thing I have is this 4.5 to 5.2. I don't know what their target on this brew is. So, what I'm going to do is once I can get a hydro sample and check with what we're looking at, and two, so I can get plenty of aeration, I'm going to go into bigger fermenter, I'm going to mix this to our final volume, uh, and then drop from here into two of my key king 20 litres, the juniors, uh, and ferment separately in there. But I want to go here now, because I want to be able to check the gravity, so I can make sure I'm going to be starting in a range where I'm more likely to hit that, you know, 5, 5.2% 5 range. So, let's get in there. Now that's it. This is going to give me two goes at air rating, so that's not going to be a bad thing. Not really sure they're going the other way, but not let the sides go for me. And I've only just thought after getting halfway in here that I didn't actually check that that tap was closed. That could have been a disaster. Anyway, I've done that with minimal mess, which is a good thing. Now, this says, it says 15, doesn't say 15 litres, it says it's, um, well, it says it makes 20 litres of quality craft beer. Uh, it says to add 5 litres to it. So, we know the issue that it's 15 litres to start with, uh, and we've got water up there to 16 litres, so that's very possibly where we're at. I don't know if these markers are particularly exact, but um, full cube, probably it's close to 16 litres. So anyway, let's get... 
Let's get a gravity reading so I can work out how much we can cut this back to still get to where I want to get. Let's poke you out of the way for a second. You know, I might, oh, my five kilometer. Oh, no, let's, let's call that 1060. So, I want to get five. I'm going to work off the Empire Rail because that's, I think, is the yeast that's going to give me the result I want. So, at 70%, uh, let's do it real quick. Let's do some quick calculations here. Okay, so I want to start in gravity of about 10.56. If I get 70%, uh, it's going to give me about 5.1% in the keg. Okay, so I start at 10.55. It's going to get us down, depending on the attenuation, Somewhere between 4.9 and 5.2, depending on where we... That's even that between that 70 and 74. So that, I think, is our target. Let's get that in that section there. Yeah, okay. So 1060. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the issue we may have is that that Liberty Bell is going to ferment a little bit stronger. Uh, so if we start at 1055, that's all good. It's okay. I'm not going to. Oh. I don't think we're going to be able to water it down enough. Let's let's have a look. Uh, so I've got ten I've got ten sixty. I want ten fifty-five. I've currently got sixteen litres. Okay, it's telling me I, I can only add one and a half litres. So that's not going to get me to the twenty litres. See, so if I cut this, if I was to cut this down to to, to the target 20 litres, I'm going to need to go to around 10, around 10.49 start and gravity, which is going to get me 40, 48, 36, 4.5. So that's going to get you around 4.6%. So the kit is obviously targeting at that level. So I said I want up a little bit more. So what I'm thinking right now is I'm going to add my one and a half litres of water to this, mix it all up, I will take off 10 litres uh, to get me my 10.55. Down here, you're not going to be able to 
see that. Um, I'm going to pull ten. I'm going to pull ten liters off. Well, oh, 15, 16, 17, 20, yeah, I'm a bit under 18 there. Um, I'm going to pull... Holy shit. Yeah. Still got my body. Still got me sauce in there. Just what I need to catch. <laughs> and that was in there. That was in there getting sanitized. I sort of need that on the lid. Things wouldn't have gone too well. Pace as well. Yeah, that would have been a bit of a bit of a feck up. Yeah. So good. About some of the old sanitizer. Okay, yeah, let's try again. So, I take 10 litres off there. So I've now got, let's say 10.55. And I want, let's say we want 10, let's just go 10.50. And I will have, so I've got eight litres. Okay, I'm going to need to lead, add about three, about three quarters of a litre uh, to get that up to where you want to go. So, I want to write that down before I got here. Before I forget it. More on the laptop, that's always good. Uh, so, so, this isn't going to get into brew far because I've got no way of listing it in there. So, the first fella is 1050, let's say 1055. And the other will be 10.50. So we're going Empire. And the Liberty Bell. Right. So. All good. So I will finish this uh, that's our 10 litres there oh, all good yeah so I will uh, top this one up get the other fermenter done get, get the yeast pitched uh, so just pitch and, pitch and dry one pack on each so it's a bit over the one gram a litre. They're getting a good healthy, yeah, good healthy yeast amount. I'm going to ferment these side by side in the fridge because uh, these yeasts are pretty much identical as per their fermentation preferences. Empire's uh, 18 to 22. The Liberty Bell's 18 to 23. Uh, I'm going to set these uh, around the uh, 19 degree mark um, in the chamber, so the actual the brew might come up to 20, 20 21 uh, during that f first stage of ferment but it's going to sit right in the uh, happy zone of the yeast uh, and hopefully produce some nice flavours for us but anyway that's it 
ESB Brewing uh, Freshwater Kit, Hob, the Hop Goblin Kit. Uh, like I said, it is a limited edition, so unless you're up in a region where they're nearby, you're probably not going to be able to get your hands on one. Uh, but certainly going to give us a good look at the actual Hobgoblin, I said Hobgoblin overall. So I'm looking forward to this one. We're probably looking, yeah, end of August, early September for a for taster on this fella. Looking, <laughs> looking, looking forward to that. So anyway, guys, if you've got any comments or any questions, stick them down, stick them down the bottom. Um, thumbs up to all the patrons of the channel. So always thank you for your support. Much appreciated. It's linked down the bottom if you're interested in checking out what Patreon's about. If you subscribe, thank you very much. If you're not, hit the link. Hit the link down the bottom there. Ring the bell. Get notified when there's a new video. So you don't miss anything. Uh, if you like what's going on, give me a thumbs up. But that's me for now, little John. Hobgoblin done. So till I see you again. We're brewing beer, drinking beer, or we talking beer. Good brewing.